I led the World Food Program, which is the world's biggest humanitarian organization. And in that, we get food to people who really would die without an intervention on the front lines of war, disaster. Mm -hmm. So the only times I've ever been to the Philippines here was during really disasters disaster. or, you know, I spent most of my time in places like Somalia and Afghanistan and places like that. And then at the World Economic Forum, I was able to go from the poorest of the poor, mm -hmm. the bottom 10% of the bottom billion, to really the top 1% of yeah, the most riches and powerful, the and the decision makers. Yeah. And to me, this conversation between those who have nothing and those who have everything, and how to connect it is really the vital conversation of our time. Mm -hmm. So for me, the link between the two made sense. And I was able, during my trips to Davos, before joining it, to really link up with the world's top decision makers and CEOs to try to make a connection for those who were most suffering in the world. And we were able to raise a lot of money and to do a lot of great things to really help uh, people that needed an intervention. Yeah. Yeah. Is uh, a lot of people, a lot of people who, who are sort of who, who criticize events like APEC, um, their main their main argument is that there's such a disconnect between mm -hmm. the world's decision makers and the world's economic elite, and um, and the the people who they say they are serving. Mm -hmm. um, from your experience, having seen both sides, is mm -hmm. does that ring true, or is that a misconception? Well, some of the criticism is really true, and I'm mm -hmm. going to get to that. But before we all criticize, we have to realize the transformation the world has gone through. Asia alone has lifted more people out of poverty in the last 30 years than all of human history combined. Mm -hmm. So it's not all bad news. What we're seeing today is everyone in the world, including people in places like Darfur or Somalia have access to the internet and they understand that when their leaders say, oh, it can't get any better or stop pushing for more, they can see that there is a world of more. There is a world that works better. Mm -hmm. And people aren't taking these answers anymore. More and so, now. so more this rise of discontent, this rise of the sense of it can be better is something that the world has to pay attention to. And if summits like this here at um, APEC or Davos or these big meetings in the world are disconnected from that yearning of humanity, mm -hmm. I think they'll become irrelevant. So they have to be sure to bring in voices of young people, to bring in voices of women, to bring in voices of the rural poor, not just as an add-on, but as a source of inspiration and connection. Mm -hmm. I've been on the front lines of the world's poorest people, and I've never met anyone who wants a handout or government to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to take control of their own lives. They want to be empowered, I guess. And be empowered. Mm -hmm. And so much of what they deal with is dysfunctionality. So one of the most exciting trends in the world today mm -hmm. is that people are really taking these problems in their own hands and solving them. Mm -hmm. And so you see through smartphones and through new creations of new technology, people in cities and in rural areas, the poorest in the world, leading some innovations that can better people's lives. And to me, I draw so much inspiration from that. Mm -hmm. um, would you say then that like, uh, how, how does uh, how good of a job has um, organizations or meetings like APEC and the World Economic Forum um, and, and Davos and how how have they been able to sort of take that innovation and, te and technology and do you think they've leveraged it well or do you think that there's still room for improvement? That disconnect is you know is very serious but I see some efforts to try to address that. The same at Davos, um, there was an effort to bring in some young leaders that um, people who someday may be changing the world, but what they have done is maybe write an essay or write a, 
a book about some challenge people under thirty and they've really enlivened the discussion